Holy crow's nest. The multinational sent its social media goon squad after me with a replacement sucker for this sucker. Now, in the name of transparency, they've been very congenial about this with only a little bit of slowness due to the holiday season, and I cannot fault their desire to keep their name true. Will Monkey. I didn't even threaten them with an online review or any sort of negative press, nor did I state that I put out a slightly critical vid. They made right, and what that suggests to me is that they knew some of these were coming out feet first. Now in the previous video I demonstrated that this 3 amp hour battery was causing some issues with this vacuum. Even with it on low power, it would run only for 10 seconds and it would go into some sort of a safe mode and then after the safe mode was initiated, you couldn't put it into the high power and then get any more, any more suction out of it. Let's give it a shot. Note that it is fully charged as the 3 amp power one. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, jam that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on low power for 15, 20 seconds and see what happens. If nothing happens, I'm going to let it run for one minute. And at the end of the minute, I'm going to put it on to high power and see whether it's able to go to high power mode. Here we go. Elapsed now. Let's <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Well, it seems to have solved the problem that I reported in the first video. Stick around for this video, and what I will do is I'm gonna rip it apart and take a look at the inside, and maybe the smarty pants on the internet can comment on uh, what they think the problem might have been. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can figure it out myself. And in uh, the last part of the video, I got some tests to run. I have a new Anemo meter, and maybe I can get a little bit of a better handle on just how many CFMs this thing is sucking. And of course, I'll bring in the little brother the little runt sibling for a second run and see how that works. Stick around. After more than a dozen screws I can reveal the inner sanctum. And we got the blowing chamber here with a silicone boot for vibration suppression. And check that out. There is the blowing unit and it is caged in a metal shield. Furthermore, the actual blower is metal. This thing must spin at some ungodly speed. Huh. Let's find out. So I use a Sharpie marker to mask off part of the part of the rotor there. And got a little tachometer. Crikey, 24,000 RPM on high. Let's now take the blower unit out and have a look at that motor. A plastic cap on the end, again with a silicone damper. It makes the vacuum pretty quiet. When this thing is removed, it really screams. Amazing motor, just in the size of your palm. Tiny little thing. Oh, there's a label on it here that into the view. 300 watts. 300 watts in the palm of your hand. Man, that is amazing. Anyways, uh, some awfully, awfully beefy wires from the circuit board to the motor. Only three of them for three-phase motor. There is no sense lines. There doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, Hall effect sensors there. So I guess they don't need it because it's it's not really under any sort of ch er radically changing load like a typical power tool. And here we got the main wires from the battery. A 40 amp fuse on their automotive style tucks in there like that and let's have a look at that circuit board and the circuit board uh, lots of elastic uh, keep things glued down nice and tight they got six MOSFETs here the good sized 
good sized heat sink. And that's, that's interesting. Check that out. There's the current shunt resistor. And there is Celastic splooged all over it. I wonder. I wonder if the vacuums that are having problems with the battery issues, I wonder if that Celastic is maybe covering more of of that current shunt and I understand that the uh, resistance of these does uh, vary depending on temperature and if it's all insulated up. Huh, I wonder if that could be the, the reason. Let me know in the comments if you got any opinion on that. Otherwise I'll just uh, show you the circuit board here. Not much else to say about it. Lots of lots of surface mount components. Uh, power switch. Big ass beefy power switch with tiny little lines that go to the circuit board so it's not actually switching the full amperage. That would be a lot of amperage for a little switch, a little big switch like that even. That'd be a lot of amps. Huh. Anyways, there's the inside of this unit. Uh, one last look over in this area. Uh, to the battery area you got the power and well you got the, the temperature sensor lead right there. And you got the display board for the battery monitor right there. Okay, before I put it back together, I want to give it one last test. I want to see if that little current shunt is heating up very much when this thing is running. Let's let her rip. Yeah, that definitely warms up. This thing is fucking terrifying with it not being boxed in a plastic encasement. Uh, so here's my setup for testing how much this vacuum is sucking. I got a, a Nemo meter here set up to uh, feet per minute. And I got a conical thingamajig that I rigged up. And this conical thing is three inches in diameter. Three inches in diameter. That is a twentieth of a square foot, uh, pretty close to that. So you divide that number by 20, and that gives you cubic feet per minute. It is a new filter in the vacuum, and I have an XC battery in there. So let's let it rip at maximum power. Uh, that nice and close, and... That is about 1,170 divided by 20. It gives us 60, close to 60 cubic feet per minute. So when this vacuum is in pristine condition with a new filter, it is beating Milwaukee's specifications. Now, let's give it a whirl at low power. Well, even at low power, it is getting 920 divided by, uh, divided by 20. It's still getting 46 cubic feet per minute. That is pretty awesome. Okay, now let's hook up the little run sibling and see how it whirls. Uh-oh, the voice from heaven hath spake. BRB. Oh, I got a new hand model. Let her rip, sweetie. <laughs> 950 at maximum. What is that? 950 divided by 20. That comes out to oh, four, almost 48 cubic feet per minute. And the filter's a little bit dirty in there. Not bad at all. I like that vacuum. Now that said, my testing's pretty cursory and really needs to be taken with a grain of salt. There's nothing like real world usage to actually figure out what is better for you. And really, this one I've had problems with. 
uh, namely, I get cloggage between the little flapper and the, and the filter. The filter as well, it's not very large. It tends to load up easy, and I find this one, it loses its ductivity fairly quickly. This guy with a bigger filter, I figure it should last longer and, and retain power better. Additionally, power under load. I did not actually measure that. This guy, I do find that, even though it's moving a lot of air theoretically, I, I do find when you stick it up to a surface, you're not getting the <laughs> suction. It, it loses suction pretty quickly. This guy here, I haven't figured out how I, would, how I might test this, but I do notice anecdotally you stick it up to a surface and you can just really hear and feel the, the, the slurpiness of it. Anyways, let's do one more test. I'm going to have a look at battery life. So the word on the internet is that you can't use anything less than a 6 amp hour battery. So, of course, I'm going to test it with a fully charged 2 amp hour battery. And to keep things real, I'm not going to be testing it in the ultra high power mode. Let's just see how long it runs in low power. Uh, hypothetically, it, it should get 10 minutes of run time. Uh, let's see if it actually does that. And if it doesn't go into thermal overload, it is wide open. There is nothing blocking the vent. And you know, blockage actually reduces power consumption. Maximum power consumption is when it is wide open. So let's let it rip. That was about 10 minutes. Not bad. The battery is about two years old, too. Let's see how warm she got. Uh, only about 30. Yeah, not too bad. Did not even warmed up that much. Uh, not warm to the Dutch. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed that second look at the uh, Wilmocky M12 Fool vacuum. I think it's, uh, well, the, in this iteration, it is functional. I, I quite like it. Anyways, take care. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.